Hey everybody, and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by BrushEasy. I'm Eric Wallace, and today I'm going to teach you how to create those glowing, wispy lines. As you know, the glowing, wispy lines are very popular online right now. And as you also know, in Photoshop, there are several different ways to create the same thing. So this method today we're going to use to create the glowing, wispy lines involves the path tool and a simple round brush tool. So I've started here with my canvas and just filled the background with a gradient from blue to black at about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to create a new layer now and choose the pen tool and we're going to create a curve on a path and that's going to serve as the basis for what we're going to create as our brush set for our glowing wispy line. So I'm just going to click and then around this area of the screen going to click and hold and give it a nice curve. And I'm going to move down here, click and hold and release and that's going to fill in the curve for us automatically. You see Photoshop in this tool automatically generates the curve so we get a nice smooth curve here. Now what we want to do is make our line uh, thin at both the start point and the end point and yet thicker around this curve. And to do that we're going to create a new point about this far away um, from the middle here. And you'll see that if we click and drag that we can give this a nice curve that kind of matches the same angle and yet is thick here and again thin at the bottom. And We're going to create the start point which is going to close our path on the same point and you'll notice that the cursor gives you the little little round uh, little icon there to tell you that you're going to complete the path. Click and hold and again drag that so that we're thin at the start point and it's a little bit thicker around this curve. So there we go. We have a nice kind of boomerang like curve. And what we're going to do now is go to our path window. We're going to right click and choose make selection. And that's going to give us a marquee selection of our path. And we want to choose a feather radius of zero pixels so our edges are nice and sharp. We're going to hit OK. Go back to our layer and again choose white as our foreground color and option delete is going to fill that selection on that layer with our foreground color. And as you see we have this nice shape on its own individual layer. Now what I want to do is take this shape, duplicate it and transform it a little bit. So we're going to drag that into the new layer icon to duplicate. Go to edit, transform, scale. And again, holding the shift key will keep our proportions the same. I'm just going to scale that down a little bit, maybe just move it right there. I'm going to drag that layer again into the new layer icon to duplicate it again. Go up to edit, transform. We're going to scale it again, scale it down just a little bit more maybe. This time right click and rotate it some, kind of give it some direction here. And again, you can do this as many times as you'd like. This will give this kind of shape more of a directional look. It kind of looks like it's uh, moving a little bit. Uh, we keep putting all these thick parts uh, together. So you can keep doing this over and over again uh, with any other shape that you'd like to draw with the path tool and kind of create this glowing uh, section of lines here which we're going to learn how to make that glow in just a second. The only other thing I want to add to this just to give it a little bit different look is a blank layer and choosing our and using our brush tool rather we're going to use uh, maybe just a 19 even smaller maybe maybe a 9 point just regular round brush size and I'm just going to click that at random in different places and again this is just going to kind of give just a little bit something different here I might go and change the size maybe down to a 5 just to get some dynamics here and again just randomly using the dots then I might go in and use the marquee tool and get rid of some of those dots that are kind of out of place Okay, so here we have our nice kind of brush shape, uh, our, our lines, and even our little dots that we can turn now into a brush set. And then we can easily turn that into the glowing, wispy lines kind of graphics that we see that are very popular right now. If you don't remember how to uh, turn this particular shape we just created into a Photoshop brush, make sure you watch our other video tutorial on how to do that very thing. Okay, now to make the lines and the shapes actually glow. We left off last time with our shape and I created a brush out of that shape. So if I go to my brush tool and my presets menu, you'll see that brush here that I've created. And I'm going to scale it down just a little bit so we have some room to play around with. Actually, that's a little bit too small. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. 
maybe around this size is good perfect okay so I'm gonna create a new blank layer make sure white again is my foreground color and place the brush shape there. Now, you can download many other of these kind of glowing lines and shape patterns right from Brashizi, and that's what I've done. And I'm going to go ahead and look at some more of these just so we can play around uh, with some other things. So I'm going to use uh, this particular brush, maybe add that to our shape there. Uh, maybe go in here and grab this one. And you'll see just layering these on top of each other really gives you a very interesting uh, kind of shape. Here's one of just a, a crooked kind of line here. So maybe we'll put that there. And let's do one more. Uh, how about, let's see, this one. This looks interesting. Kind of give us some texture there. Okay, so now that we have this kind of overall shape, I'm going to just move that down to the middle of the, the image here. And again, we're going to create a new empty layer. And we're going to set the transfer mode here to color dodge. And remember, what color dodge does is takes all the elements based on the luminance of the layers below it. And that's how it decides what colors to bring through and which ones to keep transparent. So I'm going to choose some dark colors. You dark colors work best with this transfer mode. So I'm going to choose maybe some dark green. Again, go to my brush and choose a regular round brush that's rather large. So I'm going to choose a feathered maybe a maybe even a 300 brush size. And again, I'm just going to start coloring. And you'll see once we start putting that brush on the lines, we kind of get this glowing uh, effect to happen. Uh, again, let's change some colors. Let's maybe get some yellow in there. And you'll see it also is affecting the background, but that's okay because I like that. I think that looks cool. Maybe some reds. And you'll see this just gives it a very interesting look. Even you can use some dark blue. And you can just play with this all day long until you get the, the exact color combination you want and exactly what you want this to look like. But again, this is one method of really getting uh, those colors uh, to glow like you like. And again, there are several different transfer modes you can use. Just because we're using color dodge for this example, you can also change that to maybe overlay, which will kind of give everything a darker uh, look. You can do a soft light, uh, a hard light, which might not give the effect you're looking for there. Even the vivid light is uh, pretty cool. So you can play with the different transfer modes. Again, in our other uh, tip we looked at in our previous tutorials, we've gone to the adjustments uh, menu and done the hue and saturation adjustment. And what that allows us to do is just go through the spectrum of colors to get some very interesting color combinations. Uh, you can use that as a tip. And that'll give you kind of the glowing lines that you're looking for. Now, we can use the regular round brush size, again, just as some uh, secondary uh, tips and suggestions. Create a new blank layer. And again, create more of these um, color uh, dots around the edges here. And this will just kind of give us some different effect here. Again, I'm going to preserve the transparency on that and fill that with the white foreground color. And then all we need to do is just go up to the filter and blur. And if we do a Gaussian blur here, you can see that kind of gives us some depth to our shape there. So we can add that. That's kind of another tip. And again, placing that below our colors will let the color effect happen on that. On our main shape, if we were to create a duplicate layer, you'll see what's going to happen here. It's going to get brighter and brighter. If I'm going to go ahead and switch the colors back to our color dodge so we can look at this, the more times I duplicate our original layer, you'll see the wider it gets in the middle and the edges get sharper. So there's another tip you can uh, use to kind of create a really glowing center and then letting the colors kind of wisp off. And again, you can use the erase tool to go into those different duplicates of the same brush and kind of clean up maybe some of the edges if you don't want those edges to glow just as much. You can see I'm kind of turning that down a little bit by erasing some of that. If we go to our regular our original brush layer, layer one, go up to filter, blur, and use motion blur, we can get some very interesting effects by setting the angle uh, to the direction that you like and then using the distance and you'll look at the changes that we see that are being made here according to our brush shape. We kind of get this uh, motion look out, out of it, hence the name motion blur. Uh, kind of looks like it's been shooting or been shot. Uh, that kind of gives everything an interesting kind of look. And then secondly, uh, if we can create a new blank layer and pick two of the colors that we like from this. I'm just going to use the uh, 
eyedropper here and choose maybe this uh, light green here for our foreground and clicking these arrows will switch the colors and allow me to choose this darker uh, greenish black for the background and then I'm gonna go up to filter render clouds and that's kinda gonna give us a spacey kinda look and again I can use a large uh, kind of erase tool to kind of erase some of this but again this kinda gives it another dimension that you can play with colorize just to give this glowing wispy line scene uh, some added detail now you know how to create glowing wispy lines I'm Eric Wallace. Until next time, take it easy.